Are you well, my fellow individual? All right, splendid. Welcome back, everyone, to day three of this year's Bruce Academy. I'm your instructor, Professor Andy, and today we'll be going through a very troubling criminal resology case. Before we begin, I'd like to prefix that I am not one who believes that arrest should only be made once the crime is committed. I'm all about preventative justice. If someone shows me that they are willing and capable of committing a crime, then that's enough reason for me to want to put them behind bars. So when no Timmy looks at you in class and says don't come to school tomorrow, send the entire US military to his house. I want him in Guantanamo Bay by the end of the night. It's pizza day tomorrow, and I'll be damned if I miss it just cause Jared was bullying you about your mom's OnlyFans account. With all that being said, we're gonna go through this scenario together, and I want you guys to decide whether he's guilty or not, even though no crime has been committed as of yet. Now that that's out the way, let's dive into this criminal resology incident. December 1st. 2023, The Catalyst. As the year is coming to an end, most of us are preparing for the Christmas holidays. One of those people being Instagram celebrity and OnlyFans star, Ruby Rose. She's also a music artist, but go to the back of your head, name five Ruby Rose songs. A few minutes after she got back to her luxurious pastor hotel, Welcome to Hotel Transylvania. She posted a tweet on Twitter, not X, Twitter, saying, I ran into my number one spender on OnlyFans. Laughing crying emoji. Followed by a picture of her and the suspect and another image showing how much money he spent on her OnlyFans. First things first, you did not run into this man. He ran into you. He is wearing glasses with cameras built in them. This was no accident. He most likely has a room in his house filled with monitors that track your every movement. He could probably tell you what you had for breakfast this morning, 10 years ago, again. This was no mistake. He meticulously planned this for years, and now that he's made contact with you, he's never letting go. And I mean that metaphorically, of course. She would not touch this man with a 10-foot pole. She is keeping a healthy distance from him in this image. The next piece of evidence I'd like to provide for you guys is the amount of money he spent on her OnlyFans. But before we get into that, I want to give you guys a bit of a bad story to this man, so when the amount is revealed, it'll hit 1,000 times harder. The man's name is actually Brandon, and he appeared on a show on MTV called True Life. He was featured on it because he had a porn addiction. When the episode released, he was 26 years old. But the thing is, the episode dropped in 2009, which means he is currently 40 years old. This prehistoric fossil is still battling that damn addiction. And quite frankly, it whooping his ass. One of the main downsides of his addiction is that it consumed so much of his life to the point where he had no job and was basically broke. Now I live with my grandmother and I don't have a job at the moment. So when the people on MTV decided to help him look for a job, he scrolled on Craigslist for less than 10 minutes, then saw a porn ad. I see one ad that says great job, and then I see another ad that says, you know, uh, check it out, free porn. And decided to drop the job search because clearly watching porn is more important. I'd rather look at porn than look at jobs. So he decided to watch it for over two hours. Then he went and got a porn tattoo. Keep this information in mind because it'll become relevant again later. Then he went to a strip club and paid for a lap dance. Do not forget, this man is nearly broke and this is what he's spending the remaining of his money on. His brain is cooked beyond comprehension. And just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, he does this. Today, I have a job interview for the first time in a while. Uh, right now, I'm headed over to Spanky's and then to a uh, job interview. Spanky's is an adult video store that I go to on a daily basis. He finally somehow managed to get a job interview. This had to be divine intervention from God himself. He personally stepped in to give this man a lifeline. And how does he repay him? By taking a pit stop at a sex shop. He is genuinely too far gone. You cannot save him. Do you know why? Because he was in that shop for so long that he ended up missing his job interview completely. I had a in job interview at four o'clock. It is now 5.05. Uh, I wasn't on time because I spent too much time up in Spanky's. This level of degeneracy is genuinely unmatched. He is one of one. This addiction has him in such a chokehold that he would rather go bankrupt than to get a job and wait a few hours to watch his porn. So imagine my shock when this man who had nearly zero dollars to his name spent over $62,000 on Ruby Rose's OnlyFans. In only one month. Life really is not fair because he made his money off of crypto. He's a crypto bro. This Neanderthal probably dropped his grandma's life savings onto a fucking mean coin and it literally went to the moon. Someone please leak this man's address because we need to rob him. After that accidental interaction, Ruby decided to exchange phone numbers with him for some odd reason. 
Actually, I don't even blame her. I would do a lot worse for 60K. Hey, you want your dicks? The second half of evidence I have prepared for the jury is the aftermath of the phone number exchange. Some of you may have heard of the Shibuya incident from Jujutsu Kaisen. This is the phone number exchange incident. Both are very tragic, and I wouldn't wish them upon my greatest enemy, but one of them is just so horribly cringe, and that's a fate worse than death. The phone number exchange incident is no joke, and what happens next will shock you. After exchanging numbers with this clearly troubled individual, everything that we expected to happen happened. He would not stop texting her. Reading these messages felt like I was inside the mind of a schizophrenic. The sheer amount of 180 degree mood swings in this one-sided conversation is enough to give you whiplash. As I'm reading them to you, I'm gonna try and portray the emotion that I believe he was feeling in that very moment. First of all, sending someone $62,000 just for your contact name to be weird only fan guy is enough to snap anyone back into their senses. But I'm sure the only thing he was paying attention to was the fact that she remembered his name. Now, without further ado, let the show begin. What are you doing tonight? No response. Why aren't you answering me? I thought we had a genuine connection. No response. Ruby, why aren't you answering me? I have invested so much money into our relationship. No response. I am in love with you. Why won't you love me? I would fly anywhere to be with you. All I can ever think of is you. There is not a single other person in the world as perfect as you are. You could be my queen and I'd be your king. I would give you anything you could ever wish for. We can even have a one-sided open-end relationship where you can do whatever you want. As long as I know that at the end of the day, you come home to me and are only with me. I promise I will treat you better than anyone Ruby, I love you with all my heart. I have never felt this way about anyone. I want to marry you. I want to have a family with you. I want only to be with you. I would quit everything, give up everything just for you. I will never love someone as much as I love you, Ruby. I, I love you more than Bitcoin. I only love you. I will give up everything to have you only be mine. Please don't ignore me, Ruby. I'm sending you more money right now. You are making me cry right now by not answering me. I am bawling at the thought thinking that you won't be with me forever and that you don't love me anymore. I don't know if there's a point anymore to anything. All I can ever think of or dream about is you. You are on my mind all day, every day. Thinking of how you smelled in that hotel lobby when I first saw you. Thinking of your perfect voice. Thinking of your perfect smile when you first laughed awkwardly as I told you I was your number one fan. Everything about you makes me get butterflies in my stomach. Please tell me you are very busy and not seeing my text right now, princess. <laughs> Please. I cherished every second I was with you. I adore you. You are the only reason I wake up every morning. I have no purpose without you. You are my rock. Ruby? Ruby, stop ignoring me! Why are you ignoring me after all the money that I have given you to show you that I am only loyal to you? And how much I love and appreciate and adore you? How dare you not answer me? I see you actively posting on your Instagram story and you have not answered me once. You are making me very mad. I have treated you like a princess and you won't even take the time to respond to me. I will not tolerate this. <sighs> I am so sorry for getting mad at you. I did not mean to. I shouldn't have, but the love I have for you causes me to get very emotional, especially about you. I love you so much, Ruby. You are my world, my rock, my queen, my everything. There is nothing that I wouldn't do to make you the happiest little princess in the whole world. I promise I love you and only you for you. I don't care about your followers, your fans, your money. I only want you. You are the best thing that ever has happened to me. I, I know that we only met for five minutes and that you had to leave, but I have cherished it so much. I cannot stop thinking about it. And you, you were magnificent. It was almost like it was out of a movie when I first saw you come down that elevator with your perfect smooth hair, your perfect clear skin, your beautiful smile and eyes. I would never change a thing about you. I only want you forever, my queen. You will be the only thing and all I need to be happy. You have become my sole purpose in life. Baby, please answer me, my queen. Please don't leave me. I adore you, Ruby. You are all I need in my whole life. I will never leave you or even look in the same direction of another girl. 
I want to marry you. I even spent $30,000 more dollars than you since we met because I thought we had something genuine and real. I will empty my bank account just to be with you. I will travel across the country just to randomly run into you again. I will never be over you. You are the love of my life. My perfect little princess, you are stunning. You are my breath of fresh air in a world that is so dark and so cold. You are the sun to my thunderstorm, the spread of luck in my day, the pot of lucky gold at the end of the rainbow. You are my everything in this life, and I wish nothing more than to spend the rest of my life with you. I know that I will never get over you, Ruby. I sit here pouring my heart out, showing you how madly in love I am with you. I am sorry for my temper earlier. I just felt like I was so close to my life finally to be complete and that we would finally be something real. Not just my imagination and a lubricated plastic fake version of you to sit on my bed. I thought my life was finally to be complete and I thought I could finally love you. I need you. I don't think I could live without you. I don't want to live without you. You are the final piece to my puzzle. You are the only thing I need to make my life complete. I just hope you feel the same way. I will send you 10 Bitcoin right now if you answer me. That is worth almost $400,000. All you have to do is respond to me with one word, Ruby. Please, I need your attention. I need to make sure that my kitten is safe. Kitten, are you there? I have a surprise to show you my commitment. I know you will love it. It is almost done. I can't wait to show you. Surprise! What do you think? It took almost three hours. Okay, wow. That was a lot. Let's try and dissect some of the major parts of this essay. The first thing that came to my mind when I saw these was that this man is going to skin her alive and eat her intestines out with a fork like a plate of spaghetti. He is a lunatic. To be able to send this many messages to seemingly no one in only a matter of hours and to just keep going and going and going is the number one sign of an obsessed individual with a parasocial relationship. But he doesn't seem to think so because in the messages he talked about how him and Ruby had conversations on OnlyFans. My brother in Christ, do you think she has the time and energy to go through and talk to every single one of you socially enough psychopaths? Even if she did have the time, do you think she gives enough fucks to even open the messages? You guys are subhuman to her. The only reason she's even nice to you is because you keep her pockets full. She resents you. She wants to be known for more than just her body and the fact that her plan of fully committing to music isn't working like she hoped for leads me to believe that deep down inside, she hates you, all of you. But she will never say a single word because you guys are the reason why she's able to live the life she lives. And by the way, her only fans is fucking ass. Not that I know our personal experience, of course. Nah, nah, never that. I was just told from a friend of a friend's friend's great grandmother's uncle's niece's daughter's son that she just posts pictures in like bikinis and like some lingerie pics. So it's better to get her Instagram feed. Not only did he give her an additional 30K, he also offered to give her 10 Bitcoin worth over $400,000. Fuck a bouquet of flowers. Give her a bouquet of your best cryptocurrency. And people say romance is dead. He interacted with her for less than five minutes in a hotel lobby. And that was enough for him to create this completely imaginary life with her in his head. He literally has a picture of her face on his body. This man is a serial killer waiting to be awakened. I'm not a big fan of emotional manipulation. And in those messages, he was talking a lot about how he needs her in his life. He is desperate. He doesn't know if life has any meaning if she's not in it. If someone tells me that if I don't love them, they will kill themselves, I'm not gonna feel bad and stick around. No, no, no. I'm gonna offer them a helping hand. You thirsty? She's gonna have to hire the FBI to keep her safe because when he tracks her down again, and he will, she might genuinely be in danger. You know what, fuck the FBI. Hire me, Ruby. I'll keep you safe. Get back, I say. Back. When Ruby first posted this, I thought she was being a brain dead idiot who was flexing someone's unhealthy obsession with her, especially with the way she captioned it. But then I realized, this is the best thing she could have done in this position. She just let the whole world know that there was a rich, crazed maniac who was currently stalking her. So if anything happens, knock on wood it doesn't, because my God, she is a dime. We cannot lose her, that's a one in a million. Losing her is like losing a national treasure. But if anything does happen, we all know who suspect number one is. Now that all my evidence is on the table, I want you guys to decide whether he's guilty or not guilty. Even though no crime has been committed as of yet, 
do you believe that he should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law as a preventative measure? And as for me, I won't give a direct answer because it may sway your decision. But I will end things off with a quote from the late great Uncle Ruckus. He once said, Hang that nigga now! I got the rope right here! Get back, oh!